Hi everybody, I'm Craig Fischel and uh, this is a, uh, I guess a Christmas Eve bonus weather video. I was going to do this on Friday as the bonus and really couldn't collect my thoughts the way I wanted to and so I thought I'd give it another shot tonight. But uh, I am in a uh, uh, an undisclosed hotel in Raleigh. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so, one thing about the holidays that I've noticed over my many years now is that they can amplify things. Uh, if things are going well in your life, they make those good things even better. And if you're having challenges in your life, sometimes they can make those things even worse. So, and if your life looked like a sine wave like this, uh, then the downs, if you're going through a tough time at, at the holidays, is gonna be way down and the goods are gonna be way up. Um, and you know, one of the things that I struggle with, to be perfectly honest with you, is that sometimes I allow those challenging times to make me forget all the blessings in my life, of which there are a plethora of. And it doesn't get any more basic than admitting that none of us have a choice on where we're born or who our parents are. Some of us just luck out. And I certainly consider myself to be among one of those people. Uh, were my parents perfect? No, I don't think any set of parents ever has been, but did I ever have a doubt in my mind that they love me to death and they do anything for me? Never a doubt. And when I look back <clears throat> at how my professional life evolved, some of you know this story and some of you don't, but I was born two and a half hours, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, two and a half hours in one of the premier institutions in the country, if not the world, to study meteorology, that being Penn State. And then I go to Penn State, and my first job out of school is in Chicago, Illinois, and it was with a, what we call a meteorological consulting firm. We had clients like radio stations, golf courses, uh, interstate railways, trucking unions, anybody that had an economic need for weather information, uh, we would supply that to them for a, a cost, obviously. And one of our radio clients was in a little town called Martinsburg, West Virginia. <clears throat> it's that part of West Virginia that, you know, sneaks over that little thin part between Pennsylvania and, and uh, Maryland and Virginia. And um, one morning when I was calling in the forecast, the guy I was talking to said, have you ever thought about television? And I said, no, I saw myself on television once and thought it would be a public service to stay out of the business. And he said, no, I'm serious, Greg. He said, there's a brand new startup station in Salisbury, Maryland, and I assume they're gonna need somebody to do the weather for them. Is there any way you could make an audition tape? Well, one of my two best friends from Penn State just happened to be going to Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois, which is about an hour west of Chicago. And they just happened to have a broadcast program, and the students just happen to produce a 30-minute newscast uh, Monday through Friday. So my friend said, look, after work one day, and I usually got off work about noon, come on over <clears throat> and we'll help you make a tape. So I stood in front of one map of the United States for three minutes, made up a fictitious East Coast snowstorm, and sent it off. Now, I can't absolutely verify this next thing I'm going to say, but I think it's true, or at least it's mostly true. The general manager at the TV station in Maryland went against the advice of many, if not all, of his stockholders when he decided to hire me. And I completely get where the stockholders were coming from because we're a startup station, we're going up against the only station that had existed in that market for 25 years, and they needed instant credibility, and they sure as heck weren't going to get it from a wet behind the ears Penn State grad, okay? But for some reason, he hired me anyways. And then there was a young lady, and you may remember this name, that sat in front of me in the newsroom at that TV station. Her name was Ann Devlin. And it was funny, I used to hand plot the weather maps back then, and uh, she was the Delaware reporter, and so when she got back, she said she always knew what time it was by where I was on plotting the map. If I was only as far west as Tennessee, she was in good shape, but if I was all the way to the Mississippi River, she was in trouble. But anyway, uh, she took a job at WRAL, and it, that just happened to be the time they decided to hire their first meteorologist. And this was also 
just about the time that TV stations all across the country were moving in the direction of hiring a degree meteorologist as opposed to an announcer. So she dropped my name into the hat and was very encouraging, and I think she had a lot to do with the fact that they decided to, to hire me. And then on top of all of that, <clears throat> and I don't know how many of you know this, WRAL is one of the last locally owned TV stations in the country, okay? A lot of these stations have been swallowed up by these corporate clusters. And these people in high places tell everybody in their cluster how to do their job. And the amazing thing about Jim Goodman, you know, the owner and CEO, is that we were the first TV station in the country to broadcast in high definition. It wasn't New York. It wasn't Los Angeles. It wasn't Chicago. It was in Raleigh at WRL. And that's just the kind of a guy he is. Like, you know, if not me, who? And if not now, when? So the thing that, that benefited me by it being a locally owned independent station <clears throat> is that they gave me an incredible amount of freedom. All of these consultants, these experts that get paid tons of money to tell TV people how to do their job, told me people don't want to be educated. People don't want to know why things are happening. They just want to know if it's going to rain or not and when. Well, yeah, there are some people like that, and you can't please everybody. But you know what? For over 37 years, those of you that are watching this video right now, you and I together proved those people wrong. Okay? I love to share the science of meteorology, and the feedback I got from all of you was, give us more. <laughs> and that's why I think things worked out so well for as long as they did. So I look back on my life, and if any one of those dominoes doesn't fall the way it does, my life's completely different. I'm probably not making this video right now, or if I am, it's about something entirely different, and maybe in a different city or town. So the message for me <clears throat> is that every time I encounter challenges in my life, and God knows I have, I need to approach it from a standpoint of gratitude to be thankful for the blessings I do have, of which, again, there are many, many, many. And if you're going through a tough time this holiday season, and the holidays have sort of amplified that negative part of the sine wave, try to think of at least one thing that you're genuinely thankful for. And it might, it might at least not make the sine wave as negative. Maybe it'll even go above the x-axis just a little bit. <laughs> All right, folks. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and we'll talk to you again uh, the day after Christmas. So y'all take care, everybody. See you later.